A few years ago, I was at a college and somebody asked me about depression. That seems to be a biggie in this country. How do you overcome depression? What do you do? Well, see how it arises. See what happens first. A painful feeling arises first. Right after that painful feeling, tension and tightness arises in your mind. Then your thoughts start, and then your habitual tendency to try to control the feeling with your thoughts, and that makes the feelings bigger and more intense. And that leads to the birth of action. Leave me alone. I don't want to be, I don't want to be bothered. I'm depressed. And you get into your thoughts and trying to control your thoughts more and more and more. And that feeling, that painful feeling keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what to do? A painful feeling arises. As soon as you notice that painful feeling, you use the six R's, which I haven't gone all the way through yet, but I will right now. You recognize that your mind has a painful feeling in it. You allow the space for that painful feeling to be there. Don't keep your attention on it. If you keep your attention on a painful feeling, that painful feeling is going to get bigger and more intense. You relax that tension and tightness in your head, in your mind. As soon as you relax, your mind is clear, your mind is bright, and your mind is pure. Why? Because you've let go of craving. Now, <clears throat> you have... <clears throat> You have to bring up something wholesome. And that is smile. Sounds odd. A lot of Buddhists don't like the idea that you're supposed to smile, but they're the ones that suffer the most. <laughs> when you smile, your mind becomes light. And you become very observant. When you smile, it helps your mind to be more alert. Bring that smiling mind back to your object of meditation. Return. And repeat staying with that object of meditation for as long as you can. When you do this over a period of time, the, the amount of distraction becomes less and less because you're improving your mindfulness. And the time that you spend on your object of meditation gets to be longer and longer. As you stay on your object of meditation, your mind, I'm going to give you a definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness is remembering to observe how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. This is key. It's not trying to control anything. It's not trying to make anything different. It's just the observation mind. That's what mindfulness is. Mindfulness right now is starting to be catch-all phrase and nobody ever gives you a really clear definition of it, you're supposed to know what mindfulness means. But it's, it's just like the word wisdom. Everybody knows how, what wisdom is. It means to be wise, right? No, whoops, you can't use that word in the definition. What is wisdom? Wisdom is developing the ability to see this process. And when you are able to see it, you can let go more quickly. You, your mind naturally tends to become more happy. <clears throat> That's the whole point of the meditation. 
It's learning how to naturally release and relax all of the suffering that we do when we try to control things. We can't make things happen the way they want to. They're going to happen the way they happen. But we can use the six R's and eventually there is personality change towards the positive because you're putting more and more wholesome things in your mind. And when you put more and more wholesome things in your mind, things like depression become weaker. Now this is a kind of hindrance, depression. The last thing you wanna do when you're depressed is to smile or laugh. That's the last thing you feel like doing, and that's the first thing you should be doing. You start smiling, you start laughing with yourself about how crazy your mind is. Everybody's mind is crazy when it has craving in it. So there's a, a big problem that we have because we keep taking taking everything personally. This is my feeling, this is my anger, I have a right to be angry because you're causing me suffering and I'm gonna throw it back at you. But the truth is you are making yourself suffer by taking these emotional upsets personally and fighting with them. You wind up saying things that later you wish you hadn't said. You wind up doing things that you wish you hadn't have done. This is how wars start. And it's war within yourself. I don't like this feeling. I don't want it there. Then you try to think the feeling and then you come up with all kinds of stories justifying what you do when you have that kind of feeling arise in your mind. And you cause yourself suffering and you cause other people around you suffering because of that. So what we have to do is learn how this process actually does work and then <coughs> Practice the way to change. Almost everybody that comes, well I say almost, I have, to, I have to say that because a lot of people are born into Buddhism, they don't have a choice. But everybody that really understands what suffering is, they start looking for a way to let go of all the pain they go through. And it's, it's hard work. It's not easy to let go of this pain because we're attached to it. This is me. This is mine. This is who I am. Well, did you ask that painful feeling to come up? Did you ask all of those thoughts to come up and try to fight that painful feeling? Well, no, not really. It's an impersonal process that we're taking personally and that is the cause of suffering. When I give retreats in Asia in particularly, in particular, <clears throat> almost everybody that's practicing Buddhism, they know about the Four Noble Truths. And the first noble truth is suffering. And to them, that translates into everything is suffering. And that's not true. The second part of the noble truth is, there is a cause of suffering. What is the cause of suffering? Craving. I don't like it. This is a painful feeling, mental or physical, it doesn't matter. I don't want that feeling to be there, clinging. 
all your stories about it and taking it so personally. This is my idea. This is the way it has to be because my, my mind has told me this over and over again. That doesn't necessarily mean it's true. What you have to do is understand that there is another noble truth that's really important and it's the most important part. The cessation of suffering. Every time you use the six R's and you relax that tension and tightness, your mind is clear, your mind is bright, and your mind is pure. There's no thoughts in your mind at that time. But you bring that pure mind back to a smiling mind. That means your mind becomes even lighter and more alert. And you bring that smiling mind back to your object of meditation, which is, for me, most of the time I'm teaching loving kindness meditation. And that is a good, happy feeling in the center of your chest. And it feels good. And a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what meditation actually is. The Buddha said there's three parts to your meditation. You practice your generosity. You take somebody 